Hey everybody, I want to show you some of my more advanced automations that I use in Trello and these are pretty cool. I use them on my meal planning board as you're about to see, but you can apply these to all sorts of different workflows and they're really cool because it shows you just how robust Trello's automation can be and how you can kind of build your own app if you can just think through the logic of what you want to accomplish. So let's dive in. This is my meal planning um, board. I keep track of different meals. Each list is a different category of meals and each card is a recipe. I have a checklist with the different things that are needed for that. And depending on the recipe, there will be instructions inside of it. It might also have screenshots with instructions, but the key part of the workflow is that each card is a recipe and it has a custom field showing the list it's in. I have automation that sets that automatically, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, and the ingredients are in a checklist called ingredients on the card. All right, so that's how this board works. And I have a bunch of automation on here. So my most common one that I'm pretty proud of is uh, when I move a card to Meals on Deck, that's kind of my list for like, here's what I wanna make. And so when I go in here and I click approve meal, it's going to build my shopping list for me, which is going to create a card and shopping list for each item in that checklist for ingredients. And I also have automation that will automatically tag them um, if there are certain cards. So for instance, if it's a carrot, it's gonna be produce. If it has you know, bacon, chicken or something, it's gonna be labeled meat. And then I can actually, the UI is a little funky here because I have so many buttons, but I can actually click this short sort shopping list and it's going to sort that list by the different labels in those categories. So it can help me as I'm going through the grocery store. Um, and you can see I haven't filled it out for everything. Like I need to improve things with like zucchini is produce, half and half is dairy, et cetera. But um, yeah, you could see, I'll, I'll show you the rules and how these work in a second and how that, how that manages to be. But so yeah, so let's say I go shopping and then I can, you know, archive all cards in this list. And then another cool thing I do is that when I am done with this, I can say I made it and I press this button and what it does is it moves it all the way to the end over here to this list called recent. And cards will sit in here for a bit. And then when um, it's been, We'll look in a second and see exactly what the rule is, but I think it's like once a week, it looks at cards that have been in here. And if the last made date is more than 30 days ago, it will move it back into its original list. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to randomly pick a meal I just made last week because that's kind of, you know, that's kind of like, uh, I'm going to like veto it if I just made it last week. So one thing that I don't use as much anymore, but it's still pretty cool, is this pick a generic meal or pick a meal for me, because sometimes I just can't be bothered to even pick a meal. Um, but if I click that button, it's going to randomly grab a card from that list, and then it's going to move it here to meals on deck. And so that's where, you know, again, we kind of pick up the workflow of approve the meal, I made it, sends it back to blah, blah, blah. And that's how it works. So that's the automation. This is some pretty cool, like advanced stuff. Um, it's really handy. It pretty much automates a lot of my meal planning because it just helps me come up with ideas, builds my own shopping list, and then helps me make sure I'm not coming up with an idea that I just had. So let me show you some of the automation I have behind it. Click that lightning bolt. We'll head to automation, rules, doo -doo -doo, enabled. All right. So first of all, I'm not going to go in order because I want to try to help it make a little bit more sense here. Um, but basically what uh, this rule is, this is the very first thing. So when a card enters the board and I'm creating a recipe, this rule says when a card is not in that shopping list, when it's added to the board, set a custom field called origin to card list name. And this is a Butler variable you can reference. And so what's happening is when I create a card in, you know, let's say I'm adding a new recipe here, it's going to automatically set a custom field to origin to the current list name. And so you can see it's going to do that in at any list that I am. Any list, this should call it generic. And you can see it pops up right there. So that is my automation that does that. And now let's head back in there and look at some others. Doo -doo -doo. So yeah, so that's the first thing that happens. And then other rules that I have in here, do, do you can see a lot of these ones where I talk about regex. These are the advanced ones that's kind of like applying um, well, actually, these are applying labels, um, but this one specifically said, basically, since it's grabbing the list of items, uh, it, or sorry, ingredients in a recipe, I don't want to build a shopping list with things like water and salt. And so it automatically removes those cards. So that's a handy one. But then this one does something kind of similar and basically says when something with 
these specific items is added to shopping list, add the purple dairy label to the card. And so just to kind of look in here to see what this looks like, you can, I'll uh, copy and paste this so you can try to uh, add this on your own if you want, but these little things are, they're called pipes. And it's basically the thing on your keyboard, just to the, like, if you look on the row with the P, it's at the very right of there. If you hit shift and hold the, that backslash, it'll make a pipe icon. And so that is how you create all these different things. It is not, uh, or it is, sorry, case sensitive. So that's why you see I have egg and then capital egg. So that one's a bit advanced, but um, it's kind of cool. And you can see how that could be kind of helpful. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have on here with meat, um, produce. And then this is a bit more of an advanced one, but I don't use this as often anymore. But I basically built something where if I um, make a card and find meals with, um, it's going to look in all of the, it's going to basically go throughout the board and find cards that have, let's say I want to make, I have onions and I want to make something with onions. It's going to go through, let's actually just see if this works. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We'll do it with onion and see if it still works. I haven't used this in a while. So what it's doing is it's basically going through all cards on the board and finding any recipe that involves onion in the ingredients and creating a list of all of those recipes for me. And then I can go straight to it. So it's a great way to be like, I have half and half in my fridge. What can I make with half and half? Um, so that one's a pretty cool one. I don't use that as often as I should. I'm kind of glad it's still working. I really should get back into that. And so I think that is all that I have here under rules. Um, then for schedule, this is where every Friday it's going to look at each card with a custom field of last made set to a date more than 30 days ago. So and I'll show you how it gets that last made date set. But that's where I was telling you when it moves into that list of, you know, recently made, it's going to look at all those cards in there. And if it's been more than 30 days, then it will move back to um the list with the name of that custom field. And this is the syntax we use to grab the value of the custom field and then moves it moves it back into that actual list. And then let's see, I don't think we have anything with due dates. Card buttons, this is where the magic lives here, okay? So approve meal, this is basically like I said, when I'm like, I've queued something up in Meals on Deck and I'm like, let's do it. So this moves the card to the top of the list, Meals on Deck. Um, if it's not already there, it may already be there. But if I'm like climbing th through a recipe and I'm like, I want to do this, it'll go ahead and move it up there. Um, and for each checklist item, it will create a new card with the title checklist item name in list shopping list. And so that's where it's literally looking at what do I have in my ingredients checklist and create a, a shopping list for me in shopping list. And then the other side of it, when I made it, it's going to clicking that button will move the card to the top of the list recent and set the date of the custom field last made to right now. And so that's where that's also really helpful because I can see how often I frequently made stuff. And so even after it moves back into its original list, you can see on these cards that I can still see when was the last time I made it. And you can see oh, it's been a little while, so might want to bring some of these back. So those are those. Um, and then, yeah, I don't really use this one all that often, but I could if I wanted to, the send back one, it basically just moves it back to a list. So this is more useful if I'm using some of my board buttons that pick out meals and I'm like, oh, I actually don't want that meal. I don't feel like figuring out which list it's in. I just click send back and it's going to move it right back to the list it came from. So here we go. Um, so board buttons. These are all of these up here. Pretty much they're the same exact rule for different lists. It's just, you know, if I say pick meat list, move one randomly selected card from meat list to list meals on deck. And just to show you where we get that from, if you go to move cards, you'll see there is a move. You can pick the number randomly selected cards from a specific list and so you can say where to move them to. And so that's super helpful to do. Um, like I said, I don't always use that. And you can string multiple actions together and I can say pick out this week's meals and it's going to pick like one from each category. Like I said, I've kind of lately started getting into more of like going in and kind of coming through what sounds good. But it's really helpful to be like, eh, pick a new meal for me or pick a quick meal. I don't know what I want to make and see what it suggests. And if I don't like it, then I just send it back or I approve the meal. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And this is some of my favorite automation that I've done. And like I said, it's very, seems kind of basic to do it on meal planning, but it actually shows a lot of the power that Trello has and how you can kind of connect different functions and features together to build something pretty robust that plans your meals for you, makes your shopping list and does just about everything but cooks the meal itself, which maybe I'll have an updated video showing how to do that at some point. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know, comment below, but also would love for you to subscribe to
in the channel and um, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I'm super close. So, you know, if you can just click subscribe on this one, you might might help me hit that milestone. So thank you so much and I'll see you later.